to everyone. Good morning and welcome to my UCP's July, cannot believe it's July, AT Talk. This morning, Peter Grand and Tom Sikama from MOVE are with us to talk about inclusive mobility technology. <clears throat> Excuse me. Over the past 20 years, Peter has worked diligently in leadership roles at the intersection of the automotive and mobility industries. He has advocated on behalf of those who rarely get heard and can be credited with many accomplishments in advancing inclusivity in Canada through his business efforts and the various boards he serves on. Peter has extensive experience in identifying, attracting, and thoughtfully relating to key stakeholders required in the development of thriving transportation ecosystems. He has a proven track record in successfully creating scalable partnerships with expansion opportunities that foster interactive collaborations. In 2017, Peter co-founded MOVE, which stands for My Universal Vision for Everyone, an industry leader in the innovation development and implementation of the first universally built and fully inclusive mobility technology. MOVE aligns with Peter's skills and passions rooted in the mindfulness and compassion that is crucial in tackling the many unique and important inclusion issues in moving people, data, and products. If you would like a certificate of completion for this session, please email me and I'll drop my email uh, address in the chat. Welcome, Peter and Tom. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, should, should we get started here? Is that, that that's the intro? They are all yours. Great, great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us and, um, you know, Diane and, uh, and Leslie, th Leslie, thank you for, for having us today. This is uh, quite an honor for Tom and I to be able to speak with, you know, the, the various stakeholders in the state. Um, it's something uh, pretty passionate uh, that we're, we're presenting today and uh, we're really excited for it. So thank you. And, um, you know, we'll get started. I'll, uh, I'll, put, I'll put the presentation up here and, you know, talk about how we want to flow today a little bit as we, um, as we get in here. So just... Give me a thumbs up once you can see my screen, if that's okay. You're good. Um, you're good. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this part so I can see. So very long title and um, pretty complicated topic. If we wanted to talk on this, I could probably take a whole day of, uh, of panel discussion. So what we decided to do today was really keep this high level with the hopes that we could, um, you know, foster some uh, conversation and some sharing around what some of the challenges, uh, successes, um, and, and just general comments and, and sharing uh, from a human-centered design standpoint, uh, what mobility and collaboration means in your community. Um, everything is a little bit different uh, everywhere we go um, because you're trying to really build something that is a made-in solution in that area. And, and, and we're all a little bit different. And just like a disability, there's nothing more unique than that. Um, somebody with MS might have more in common with somebody here in Canada and Michigan than their own next door neighbor. And we have to find ways to really, you know, connect these uh, commonalities and, and um, resources and uh, stakeholders to really do a better job moving forward in the future of having these ecosystems start to be much more sustainable and uh, resilient over time. So we're gonna keep it high level today, but really hope that we can flow and, and, and generate some conversation. So if there's some questions that come up throughout the presentation, um, maybe put your hand up and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll answer them on the fly so that they're not lost and we can really um, make some notes and maybe say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle that one a little later or near the end. But um, I, I encourage uh, some flow here and, uh, and everyone just to participate as they, as, they, as they can and feel like it because that's really what the collaboration piece is, is all about. So um, you can see we got our, our QR code there. You can go to both the, uh, the Apple store and Android stores and uh, download it at GoMove, M-U-V-E. And um, if, if you're interested before or during or after the presentation on, on seeing the app on your phone and, and using it uh, in this sense. So, um, why isn't it changing here? Here we go. 
So today's discussions equals tomorrow's actions, because what we're doing today is really changing a paradigm of, you know, fixed route, um, structured transportation systems, and really trying to get agile and listen to, you know, the stakeholders and the community's needs from the ground level and trying to build something that is much more um, responsive to the actual needs of, um, of the stakeholders on the ground. A lot of times systems are built and not a lot of feedback is asked of the, you know, of the stakeholders. And um, from my experience, that's really one of the things that ends up um, kind of siloing all these services and all these operations into, you know, really protected silos that aren't able to, you know, branch out and find new opportunities and uh, capitalize on shared resources and things like that. So, you know, when, when we can use technology to collaborate with, you know, with our, our subscribers, memberships, partners, contractors, funders, things like that, we're able to really capture the data and, and in, in real time, you know, move and flow with, with a program that, um, that we can land on, hopefully with time, something that really works. We can't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, mistakes are learning opportunities that, uh, you know, that we can catch quickly with technology and we can iterate and, uh, and close that gap rather than making the same mistake over and over again. So it's something that, um, you know, that we're really passionate about. And as I said earlier, um, only able to do that when you can get a group discussion like this, a bunch of people at the same table and really openly share, you know, the, the wins, the losses, the, the frustrations, and then just uh, take them as they come and work one by one and, and try and, um, you know, and try and solve them and close those gaps. So, you know, when, when uh, Diane introduced us, she talked about uh, MOVE and uh, my universal vision for everyone and what it stands for. And um, the, the universality of a, of a technology that was designed from the ground up to really tackle this problem and to engage with the stakeholders. And as you can see from the diagram there, where, where MOVE really wants to sit is that technology facilitator. Um, it's, it's expensive to build technology. It's intense to really you know, get in there and keep it up to date and, um, and keep um, innovating and things like that. And, and you guys, I don't know where all the backgrounds come from here, but I can imagine we're all kind of like-minded stakeholders here sitting uh, on this Zoom call. And, and you, you got, everyone has a lot, of, a lot of responsibilities, a lot of hats to wear. And I think we all know deep down that we can, we can collaborate more and, and do a better job, but sometimes the time doesn't allow us to do that. And I think that's where technology can really um, become a partner and, and allow us to easily more easily and efficiently collaborate and, and find these uh, sustainable uh, programs to go there. So when it's when, when I created MOVE, it was my or our universal vision for everyone. But as we have these conversations and we begin to hand the program over to the stakeholders who need it, it becomes your universal vision for everyone. And we really want to, you know, be agile enough to cater to that and make those changes because there is no one size fits all solution here. So um, we're excited to show you what we've done, but we're also open to the fact if, if you've uh, caught some mistakes or, or we may, there's some good ideas here, we're definitely open to you know, always iterating and listening and uh, in that human centered design piece. So Ben, that was a great intro. Um, I would have never written that, so thank you to whoever wrote that, but that's, um, that's been my passion for the last 15, 20 years at the intersection of automotive and, and accessibility. Um, you can see the MV1 there is an accessible vehicle that was built from the factory. Um, I was actually the Canadian distributor of that vehicle um, uh, over the, the last 15 years, and it was a purpose-built, ground-up, accessible vehicle that really um, changed the paradigm in transportation. So um, it was uh, an honor for me to be able to travel around North America, Canada, and the U.S. and really talk to these stakeholders and try and listen and find the gaps that, uh, that might exist in transportation. And what I noticed was that the vehicle is important and the fleet vehicles are important, but it was really that communication piece that was lacking um, in the industry and, and how everyone could kind of be in contact with each other in real time and start to find those shared resources um, uh, over, you know, over a period of time and how we can, how we can do a better job and service the clients 
drive down prices, drive up quality, different things like that. And, you know, you're not going to be all those things all at once, but um, you have to take little bites at a, at a time and, and make sure that's where the resiliency comes from. So you're not just force feeding uh, a system that you believe in, but that everybody has really helped create and takes ownership of. So, um, you know, uh, I'm blessed to have uh, been able to come into Michigan and, and meet Thomas, who is very like-minded like myself, um, you know, really rooted in, in, uh, in that compassion that's needed to, you know, to, to solve these problems. So I'd like to introduce him. We've recently brought him on board as our community lead. And actually today, breaking news, but the press announcement actually came out today. But Thomas is also uh, using our technology now with his company, Ride Your Way. So rather than make this intro for you, Thomas, if you could jump in here and, uh, and, and introduce yourself, that would be great. Sure. I greatly appreciate it, Peter. And I greatly appreciate everybody coming together today uh, to sit around the computer and listen to uh, the passion that Peter and I have for the mobility community and that vision that we have for everyone. So my name is Tom Sykema. Um, I am the Michigan Community Lead here at MOVE. And I'm also uh, the founder and CEO of Ride Your Way. We are a wheelchair accessible transportation company that's based out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, my whole story, it's pretty loaded, but we'll kind of condense it down for uh, time's sake. My whole story started back uh, in 2013 on May 14th when I was actually diagnosed with a very, very rare uh, type of pediatric brain cancer. So with that whole point in my life, you know, that made me really uh, sit down and, you know, kind of look at the world uh, from a different perspective of you know, how am I going to maintain that independence and maintain uh, the same quality of life and things that I like to do uh, even before I was treated and diagnosed for my brain cancer. So uh, I remember very vividly on June 2nd, uh, before I was heading into my brain surgery, I was scrolling through uh, different types of um, wheelchairs and accessories for wheelchairs, because there's a very good possibility that when I woke up from my brain uh, surgery that I would have some uh, sort of mobility need. So from that uh, and from my entire uh, cancer treatment as a whole, you know, that really inspired me to uh, get into the medical industry. And how I did that was I became a registered nurse. Um, I'm still a registered nurse here in Grand Rapids. I work on the same uh, pediatric hematology, oncology and bone marrow transplant floor that I was treated on back in 2013. Um, and, you know, through that whole process as well, uh, nursing school and being a practicing nurse, I started to see again that transportation is such a huge issue uh, within the mobility community. So back in February of 2018, my wife and I uh, and my family launched Ride Your Way in order to uh, be that resource and that uh, source of hope for people in our community that you know, if uh, you might be going through some sort of uh, medical journey that, you know, we're able to assist you with your uh, transportation uh, and provide you with a uh, patient-centered wheelchair accessible transportation um, solution. So we've been in business for about four and a half years now. We're the only uh, wheelchair accessible transportation provider here on the west side of Michigan um, that still maintains a five-star customer rating. Uh, so we really pride ourselves in um, being that patient-centered uh, transportation resource and continuing to grow throughout our community. And that's kind of where Peter and I met over uh, the MV1. My fleet is completely made of uh, VPG MV1. And uh, we connected over uh, LinkedIn a couple of months ago. And you know we found out that we share a lot of the same vision for the mobility community. And that's how uh, we partnered up and uh, wanting to provide Michigan with that uh, one-stop uh, source of transportation that's patient-centered uh, and also driven around data and analytics. Great. Um, just curious, are we, is, is everything from a sound perspective? I know I keep getting a remind, uh, a message here that my internet signal is, is weak. Is everyone hearing everybody okay? Yes, we can hear you, Peter. Okay, great. All right, let's keep going then. So thanks, Thomas, for that. Um, you know, I really, for me, that story 
really um, touches home. I've uh, over the last 10, 15 years met a lot of people like Thomas that, um, you know, have a personal experience and have really kind of uh, put their, their life over to, you know, this type of service and uh, really wanting to make a difference. And uh, when we, when we linked up, it was, uh, it was an immediate connection. We've become great friends. Uh, we didn't do business for over a year, but we were really, you know, just kind of keeping in touch and, be, and, and building a friendship. And we finally found this opportunity to kind of come together here for this project that we're going to be sharing today. And um, hopefully for many, many others in the state of Michigan, it's like a home away from home for us. Uh, we're based out of Canada, but, um, you know, really have had a great amount of support from the state. And um, we're extremely grateful for that and really want to give back to that community um, who's given us so much. So this is, um, you know, it's great to have a partner like Thomas and hopefully many, many others as we uh, continue to build and scale in the state. Um, so why move and, uh, and who are we? I mean, we gave you a little bit of a feel of, of where our backgrounds come from and, you know, our entire company which is something that we really focused on early in our creation as we were building the technology was the culture of accessibility bringing people in you know that really wanted to you know make a difference in this in this mobility marketplace and um and building this personalized solution through experiences like thomas's um, our project manager um, is has a disability that uh, this is very passionate for uh, uh for her and her her daughter also does. And so we bring people on that really in, embody the culture of what we're trying to accomplish. And um, it's something that we're, we, we really think we did, you know, we're proud of. And um, I look at the economies now, we went from the past where we were a very product-based economy, um, a lot of uh, products out there that we were consuming and things. I feel like right now we're in more of a service-based uh, economy where, you know, it's, it's very geared towards providing services that are tailored and catered to people's needs. Uh, Thomas is proof positive of that and this five-star rating across the state and really his, his desire to, you know, to have this uh, patient-centered uh, care uh, model that is, um, you know, through his nursing and, and through his, uh, uh, um, his company that is really, really aligns well with us. So, you know, now we're moving into a future economy, which I believe is really going to be centered around data KPIs and technology, which is which allows us to start to build on some of the progress that we have made and some of the wins that we have made. But like I said uh, earlier, closing the gap on some of the the, the mistakes that we make um, sometimes time and time again, um, which nobody is to blame. But once we identify it, it is our job to try and you know close those gaps and, and solve those problems. So. You know that's what we're 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 trying to do here, and uh, it can't really be done without uh, groups like this. So, you know, uh, this is a slide that I like to kind of read. It's really the basis of the of the presentation, which is you know things that are rapidly urbanization and growing demand for diverse mobility options are on the rise. Advances in this area are often hampered by past attempts by mobility providers and program funders to build proprietary ecosystems with the aim of maximizing value for the organizations that are involved. And this kind of creates a patchwork or siloed approach to services that fail to meet the expectations and are usually costly to maintain without sustainable goals and objectives. So, you know, that's where my kind of passion comes from because I've seen you know, I've helped taxi companies go from zero accessible vehicles to seven in one year because it's almost like that the field of dreams model. If you build it, they will come. Um, and a lot of times that's, you know, it's this chicken and the egg piece that uh, is very difficult to get who goes first, who's kind of the leader um, and things like that. So we really um, are doing our best to um, you know, to, to bring these groups together, find, you know, this, this structure of, um, of accountability to each other, and then MOVE really wants to facilitate that in the middle through this, through technology. So um, when we look at, uh, when we look at this, we, this is, this is a culmination of all of our experiences really being shared with you today through this technology. So um, I'll pass it over to Thomas for, for, for the next few slides here. Yeah, so 
what is the problem? We have all had these different issues uh, related to transportation. Uh, and what we're doing at MOVE is we're targeting from a few different perspectives um, to you know, kind of alleviate a lot of those issues that we are having. Um, so the first one is you know, a lot of that uh, siloed approach that Peter was talking about earlier. We have plenty of transportation providers in a majority of the areas here in Michigan, but it kind of seems that all of the transportation providers, whether it's public transit, private, taxi, you know, they're all in their own little space and they want to uh, continue to gain more and more business, but without uh, collaborating with those other providers. Um, and then the next is, you know, more related to um, that, that patient-centered approach and that quality and service-based uh, model that we're trying to uh, promote here at MOVE and Ride Your Way. Um, and then the next is utilizing and harnessing that data. And there's a ton of data that comes from transportation uh, to make informed decisions, you know, get stakeholders on the government level um, and in the private sector uh, to harness that technology and that uh, data that's, you know, harvested from technology to uh, create informed decisions and uh, use, um, you know, different resources in the community to further the quality of transportation. And what that all looks like is, uh, you know, the move, uh, move platform and what we're here uh, to do in our communities. So, um, you know, we're really excited about the data-driven model that we're approaching different providers with and what I've, you know, recently adopted here at Ride Your Way to improve the quality of uh, transportation that we're providing to our clients, uh, but also decreasing costs um, and increasing the accessibility of transportation in our communities. And then uh, for the opportunities that are in the community, um, you know, I, over the past four and a half years uh, after starting Ride Your Way, have utilized three or four different types of technology uh, to maintain uh, the quality of our service. And, uh, you know, from a scheduling and a dispatching and a uh, tracking our KPI perspective, uh, but nothing has really amounted to what MOVE is. Uh, there is just a, there's ton of different uh, service lines that we're able to provide because of MOVE uh, in relation to our on-demand transportation requests. Um, it, it really creates an autonomy uh, for the client to be able to um, pull out their phone, pull up the GoMove app and be able to schedule an on-demand ride or also uh, schedule a ride, uh, a pre-scheduled ride for, you know, next week or the week after. Um, and then, you know, being able, again, to harness the, uh, the data-driven technology uh, to create informed decisions to really, you know, increase the number of vehicles that are in our fleet to um, provide more uh, access to transportation in our communities um, and remaining agile to uh, all of the different communities that make up Michigan um, to, you know, cater to those needs and be able to um, get into those communities that need us the most and provide that type of uh, service. Um, and then you, you can see all the bullet points. A lot of the strengths that we have are, um, you know, we're capital efficient. Uh, we're able to provide uh, stakeholders with a, a low cost quality solution um, that really doesn't amount to anything else that's out there. It's just a superior product. Um, and then, you know, we've got an amazing uh, product development team, uh, management team that are, uh, you know, you share the same uh, type of uh, passion for the mobility community that Peter and I have. Um, and then the opportunities that uh, arise from this are, you know, uh, creating a community that, you know, is really uh, backed behind the data uh, and being able to uh, create a community that uh, is centered around being mobility friendly. It's really what we're trying to get at here. Awesome. So, you know, we're, we, what we did is we, we set out to build, um, you know, some, some apps and, uh, and some technologies that could help. And we, we had one goal in mind. And as we engaged with communities and projects and pilot projects, 
we ended up really building a, something that we never imagined when we first started, but um, it's it's a full a full tech stack with these three kind of products in it. And what I'd like to do today is kind of just quickly go over them users, user and community apps, which I think is going to be interesting to show you guys. There's a really, really robust, as Thomas was mentioning, transit dispatch uh, a thing that um, piece that's online and um, is able to be shared with all the different partners and stuff so it's multi-level administration multi-level access that everybody is kind of kind of communicating on the same platform which again allows these you know shared ride opportunities um, uh, shared resources and things like that and then of course the on-demand piece was everyone is striving to you know to get so that uh, we have this equality and equity piece uh, in our mobility programs that uh, we all you know, uh, able body have come to, you know, take for granted in a sense where it just hasn't been available to people of all abilities uh, yet in a, in a really strong, robust way. So um, I'm going to quickly walk you through um, our apps just to show you how we're, we're a little bit different. Um, I'm trying not to make this a sales presentation because it's really about building an ecosystem and the technology really becomes about all of you and, and what we can do with it. But without showing you what we've done, it's, it's really hard to kind of give paint that picture. So you can connect with your mobile number, um, you know, uh, and right away we start building a profile and asking you about your needs. So you can sign up on behalf of somebody else as a caregiver or you know, uh, uh, make your own program and um, a profile. And right away, there's uh, you know wheelchair mobility, vision loss, hearing speech, and and what we're able to do here is um, is is really fine tune this kind of we'll call it profile building uh, as to what information is is essential or needed to best serve that client. So. Um, you know, you can even see other and you can start to make notes if it's a, you know, a bariatric chair or they might have, you know, limited mobility on the left side. So this way, you know, the driver is able to show up, already have this and be able to really service the client the way it's needed. So, um, you know, right away, you can see that we're asking, I have an assistance animal with me. Um, we're really trying to uh, cater to, to the, to the, uh, the rider. Um, hey, Peter. Really yeah. quick, the, is everybody able to see the Marvel app presentation? Because I'm still on the industry solutions page. Yeah, I'm still on the industry solutions oh. page. Oh, I worked in the, in the test here. Okay, let's try this again. Um, wonder what I should do here. Let's do this, stop share. How about now? There we go. All right. I guess it didn't work like our like our little test there. So um, I will go back just to show you some of those screens. So yeah, we're the, these are the profile building that I was speaking to. Um, signing up on behalf of a caregiver. Just quickly go through them. Profile building. Um, so right now, this is what you kind of see in some of your lighting, leading ride hill app providers. Um, you'll see the cars rolling around in real time on demand. If you need it, to, you need to book that way and you want to kind of just go out and grab a coffee or lunch with a loved one, whatever that might be. Um, you will save frequently used addresses and things like that, make it easier for you. Um, and you can also, you know, city, uh, city cafe. So right here, you'll start to see the type of services that are available an assisted uh, service wheelchair and then for us it's really um, key and, and important for us to uh, ideally to include transit in this program to get those subsidized rides and to get those um, that whole ecosystem together in one in one place so um, ideally that's what it would look like and you could start to add services in there would be it um, uh, EMS or, or, or things like that. So you can also pre-schedule your ride, um, confirm it, uh, add it to your calendar, and then get a, an immediate notification that that ride is is um, is, is going to be happening and that uh, and that you're looked after. So pre-scheduled on demand, you know, pretty pretty typical. But where we feel like we're different and why we would like to engage with the stakeholders is that we believe we built, you know, pieces that will help collectively lift the program uh, as a whole 
Um, so here you see is our activities tab. Um, so what we do in the area that we service is we curate events uh, in the area, local events, food and drink, sports, learning, entertainment. You know, for instance, this, uh, this talk would be on there if people wanted to join and we can start to amplify UCP's message and, and, and all our stakeholders' message if they're having events, try and get people to there. So here you see a bowling night that we do in Montreal with the Access Centre, our, our staff always goes. You can see how many people are going, the date, where it is, you know, book your, say you're going right from there, see if you want to bring somebody, confirm, and then also share it over your social networks so that, you know, everybody is now, again, amplifying those, that awareness and those messaging of all the stakeholders that are here helping. And, you know, it's not one thing just to get people to medical appointments. It's more than that. Uh, it's giving them their spontaneity back, their, their freedom to just be a part of the community, you know, to achieve, to interact, um, and, you know, to get to an event here and meet maybe their future employer, their future wife, uh, just their friend that they're going to start to go to coffees with. I believe that this is a, a huge piece of the app uh, for battling some of those, you know, social isolation, especially during the difficult uh, last two years that we've been through. So this is a piece that uh, MOVE really, you know, takes to heart and, and really um, tries to engage with all the stakeholders and get them, get them on here, uh, amplify their message. Um, also, um, from a data and, and, and uh, standpoint, we start to tag the built environment in the area. So you can see here, you have uh, green pins, orange pins, red pins uh, for different accessibility levels. And so you not only can take your trip, but you can start to pre-plan your trip and know what barriers you might face when you get there. So um, here's Crew Collective where our tech team works out of in Montreal. And right when the driver drops you off, it'll start to ask you the questions. You can skip them and you don't have to answer them, but knowing that this information helps everybody, there's always, it seems everybody always wants to kind of quickly answer these questions if they're able to. Is the entrance uh, access to a wheelchair? Yes. Um, washroom accessibility, parking accessibility. We've since upgraded this to include pictures so that if you do encounter a barrier, let's say a, a little lip in front of a door, any little bit of information helps. And now somebody can see that and know, okay, I got to prepare for this, prepare for that, and really reduce some of that anxiety that comes with traveling and not really knowing where you're going uh, all the time. So uh, these two pieces are where we, you know, really feel we can get uh, with the stakeholders, collaborate uh, and, and, and give back uh, this information lasts forever. Tourists, um, it just keeps getting stronger and stronger and more robust as the more people that contribute and, 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 and add to it. So, you know, lastly is the kind of the profile here. So you can see, like I said, you can sign up on behalf of a caregiver. So Anthony has, uh, you know, Caitlin that he, he, he helps book rides for and, and, um, and, and is able to kind of track that ride, pay for the ride, do whatever they are needed there in case that technology piece isn't, uh, you know, an older mother or father um, might not have that technology. They can still be booked for and it still be used. So a lot of payment methods can be used, coupon codes, credits, um, different things like that. Um, summary of trips, if you're, you know, giving it to insurance or doing, you know, wanting to keep track of how often you've gone out. We're, we begin to start to gamify the system a little bit and start to reward people for their contributions and tagging and in, in showing up to events. And, and this now allows us to engage with some of the local businesses to see, you know, maybe there's a 10% coupon off at a restaurant and then we can, you know, get people to that restaurant to enjoy the, the food. And now you're starting to build that circular ecosystem again where the businesses you know, see a value in getting people out and over to their establishment and, and then start to support the program, you know, coming back and, you know, maybe they're subsidizing some of those rides or they're paying for those rides for the day just to get them there. Whatever these programs might be, this is when we sit down with all the stakeholders and we start to find these willing participants. And then it really becomes something where everybody wants to jump on board because there's a, a really great pay it forward piece to it. So the accessibility is there for all the tagging and things like that. So I could go into the driver apps and everything like that, but I really wanted to give you guys a feel of what we believe makes us, um, makes us a little bit different as far as um, some of the other ride hail providers 
um, offer. We we really want to engage uh, from the ground uh, with with everybody. Peter, I don't hear you anymore. Can't hear him. Oh, there you are. Okay. Okay, so you got the presentation back. back up? Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your patience. So there's our, our suite of products and, and everything like that. So I wanted to you know, pass it on to Michigan, or to Michigan, to Thomas. To, oh, the, you know, I mentioned it earlier. Michigan is, you know, kind of a home away from home from us. It's really a place where we're looking to expand and, and aggressively impact the market in that movement of people in that uh, in, in this piece that we're talking about. And um, as you guys are aware, it's just such a forward thinking, progressive state. Um, mobility city is what I like to call it now, um, coming from the automotive industry, uh, growing up as a, as a son of a dealer principal. Um, it was a, a Detroit was always a, a place that we, you know, look to and, um, and, and it's fun that my career has gone from automotive into mobility and it's kind of almost followed the way Michigan has gone, which is, you know, really, really interesting and, and synergistic. So um, there are a lot of opportunities that, that are presenting themselves there. We love all the different stakeholders that we've been able to meet. And, um, and, and engage with. So hopefully today we can you know, meet some more of those and, and continue to put some, uh, some wins on the board and, and work towards our goal. Um, we, we really got our foot in the door with this project here. We actually were awarded some Michigan Mobility Challenge dollars and we went up into the UP and started to develop and work with um, uh, Escanaba and some of the smaller transit agencies up there. Unfortunately, right when we were supposed to go live there, um, you know, COVID hit and their operations really suffered. They went to very little to zero ridership. The staffing was tough, all working remotely, and it just ended up right at a key time, um, very difficult. So that ended up, uh, they had to just kind of go with the back to what they were doing. And, uh, but MDOT was really interested in what we were doing, so they found a new area for us. So we're right now in Washington County, just wrapping up our pilot project there, where Thomas was helping to support us and, uh, and helping to build. And, you know, we've had some wins, we've had some learnings, and we've had some struggles. And, um, and, and this is not something I didn't expect. Um, it, it is what it is when you go to these places and you're trying to really develop something new from scratch. So... Um, we're going to take those learnings, um, analyze them, rework them, and really keep going ahead with, you know, closing those gaps and, and really working on it. So we're there. Um, we got some funds from MDOT. We got some, uh, uh, I guess it was called Planet M. It's escaping OFME funds. And we, we've just really, really enjoyed working with everyone there. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's had a great uh, impact on our company moving forward here. So, um, and then we met Thomas, uh, who was helping us to build that. And then um, is now, we're now in kind of his community in Grand Rapids because he is developing a technology. So the key to these kind of ecosystems is connecting neighboring communities and, and just kind of expanding slowly and methodically, but building out so that you can start to, you know, find how we can cross borders a little bit more efficiently into different counties things like that. So, you know, Thomas, I think that it's best for you kind of to speak to the stakeholder piece, because this is your community that you're extremely passionate about. So I would, as I am, but uh, you are there every day. And I think this is um, something that you're really good at. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, we're all Michiganders and we really do have a dynamic community. Uh, we've got a bunch of amazing community members that uh, are very giving and want to you know, come together for the betterment of uh, our community members. So uh, when it comes to community stakeholders, you know, we are looking to partner and collaborate with a whole host of uh, individuals and organizations that share that same uh, mission and goal of uh, that universal vision for everyone. 
So whether it's uh, not-for-profit organizations uh, that are able to, you know, uh, input some of their uh, local events that are going on, uh, get involved with uh, tagging events like Diane and Leslin uh, previously had this, uh, this spring, um, or, you know, uh, looking into grant dollars and subsidizing rides if there are any funds available for that. Um, and then we're also going into, uh, you know, those end all uh, organizations that our community members are accessing, like, uh, you know, healthcare providers, hospitals, doctor's offices uh, that are, you know, uh, sharing that same goal of increasing the quality of transportation, uh, but, you know, on a broader scale, increasing the health of our community. Um, and then you've got different transit agencies, uh, both private, taxi, and uh, um, public transportation agencies that make up that whole mobility ecosystem. Um, and then on a broader scale, you know, we're also looking to collaborate with government reps uh, in order to, you know, look at the funding piece of uh, these larger projects and moving into different communities uh, to create a sustainable uh, lifelong type of uh, organization, such as, you know, what we've done in uh, Wave Territory in Washtenaw County, and then what we're also hoping to do here in West Michigan uh, with my company, Ride Your Way. And then really it boils down to the community advocates too. Um, you know, what better way to share that uh, universal vision and mission uh, than with the people that, you know, share uh, those same challenges that we're all facing uh, related to transportation. So being able to connect with those community advocates to uh, work through some of those um, booking a ride, uh, the events module that we have within the Go Move app, um, and then, you know, the tagging to really increase that transparency of our community. That's what I wanted uh, when I was sitting up in my hospital bed in room 801 on June 2, 2013, was, you know, having a community that was back behind me uh, to say, hey, you know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, advocate and uh, be that voice for you um, that, you know, if you're facing a mobility challenge, you know, we're going to create that transparent community so you can do all of those uh, things that you did previously before your diagnosis and maintain that quality of life that you would like. And then the Michigan businesses, we've got so many small businesses here in West Michigan and I know across the state uh, that really back these community driven initiatives uh, to create that transparency and mobility model that we're hoping to do with MOVE. Um, and then, you know, getting the people that are directly impacted by our mission here at MOVE, uh, which is our seniors and uh, the disabled population. Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. Um, so the path forward uh, is building an adaptable foundation um, that is based in that human centered design that 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 input from everybody that participation support that centralization of data in one space and then that kind of gives you that resiliency and that buy in so that everybody is accountable to each other, you know, rather than, you know, some people watching from the outside, some people are in the inner circle. And I just feel like, you know, these circles really got to come together uh, over the next uh, little bit. And we really need to revamp and rethink the way we're doing some of these things. So that's, you know, really, again, uh, we could get into the weeds with this topic. It's a huge topic that has become a passion of mine and, uh, and over the years, and it's something that I'm watching, you know, in different ways all across the state of Michigan and North America, really, a lot of really innovative ideas coming out and things like that. I mean, MOVE is, is one of many, but, um, you know, I, I really feel like what we've, what we've kind of folk chosen to focus on really is, is, is solving the the most difficult and most important problem first. And it feels like the rest should be easy after that, but easy is might be a little bit of an understatement, but you know, this is where a lot of people always solve the, the low hanging fruit and, and, and like that. And then they're like, oh, forgot about that beautiful one on top of the tree. Let's see if what, what, what we can do now. And then it's a lot of patchwork. So um, starting from the ground, ground up and building it up is, is is super important and what we've learned over a, a bunch of pilot projects i don't 
love the word pilot projects because we put so much time and energy in building, you know, these stakeholder groups and, ev and everything. I never want to leave a community after I, I get very, very attached to it, but this is how you learn as well. So, you know, we're grateful for pilot projects, but uh, with Thomas and, and going forward, we really want to look for opportunities that we can, you know, that are long-term, that are, that, everybody is kind of bought in and is ready to, you know, to take this from a pilot to a, a program, not be afraid to make mistakes and, and really, you know, jump in, get tagging events going, um, engage with the advocates, like um, Thomas said, to, you know, to help raise this awareness around what is needed in our community. And I think we'd be surprised, you know, how we can, with, with the collective effort, how we can really rally bigger groups to really help support us and move forward in, in this type of um, uh, kind of changing landscape of this mobility marketplace. So our hope today was really that we could, we could kind of check off these three learning objectives, which is a user-friendly technology platform that service, serves the community as a whole. And I feel like, you know, that was what we were trying to show you with Move and, and what can be done, whether it be Move or, or any other technology. I, I do believe it's about the table and who's sitting at it and how the discussions are taking place, not about, you know, how many vehicles you have and or what the budget is, because without proper planning and, and, and communication, it's really difficult. So. The second piece is that ecosystem that we touched on uh, almost throughout. Um, you know, you can see that we sit in the middle here. There's always certain gaps and they always seem to revolve around transportation, getting to and from, uh, getting there affordably, uh, getting there quickly or efficiently um, and consistently. Uh, these are the little gaps that we hope to attract you know, the transit, the taxi companies, the private transport companies to fill those gaps. And then it really becomes the community piece, the data and the technology kind of coming together in that, in that one place so that we can get all these things accomplished that we need to do. And then of course the collaboration piece and how it can help to build these type of systems. So um, that is, pretty much it and, and we we kept it high level in in, in that sense because you know we have uh, roughly 10 minutes left and really hoping to you know hear some stories uh, get some feedback from everybody and um and and try and have a a, a nice robust conversation to you know to end this and um, thank you everyone peter, for your time peter and tom how how can attendees help what can the folks that are at this webinar do to help move go move forward i think there's a lot of ways um you know we're open i think the first one is hey, let's connect like let's let's get a, on a, on some email strings be it linkedin or or through email and you know we'll put you on our list and when there's opportunities whether you're in detroit and ann arbor and grand rapids wherever you are you know we we have these people that we can draw on and we can we can engage and see if there's opportunities that are win-wins for all of us. So I think the first piece and the easiest one is really and uh, that that last slide. And Diane, am I sending this to you after so that you can share with everybody? Yes, that'd be great. Okay, mm -hmm. Perfect. So the, we do have our information on there uh, via email and uh, you can find us in LinkedIn. But that's really the first and easiest step is let's connect. Let's let's share um, uh, email addresses. And, and, and if there's more, if you have something in mind, if you have an opportunity or a project, you know, we're we're ready to listen. Um, but. At this point now, I mean, that's really what we're after. We're after feedback, we're after partnerships, we're after, um, you know, uh, engagement and tagging events. I think that the tagging piece is really fun. We've had, we've done some great things in Canada where we did it with universities. You saw academia on that one slide where, you know, the kids would actually do it as part of their course curriculum. I say kids, uh, they're university students, but, um, they, they would uh, go out for days and, and it was part of a sustainability course and they would start to get an appreciation of, wow, old Montreal really is difficult to navigate. Like it's uh, old, it's uh, every building has two steps to the front door, every, you know, a lot of um, hills and undulations in the, in the landscape, it, it becomes difficult. So they, no one appreciates that until you start to, to dig in. So I think that's a big piece too. So I, I would encourage you all to download the app. 
um, uh, Leslin, Angel, uh, and I went out with Tom and uh, went into our community of Southfield, which is just where our office is at, and tagged several places. And what you do when you do that is you, you are kind of rating the accessibility of that place and how easy it is to get into. Are the bathrooms accessible? Is there an elevator? Things like that. And that's really helpful for folks with disabilities when they're looking to go out somewhere. Um, they don't need to call ahead. They can just check on the app and say, oh, this I can get into this place and I can have dinner at this place. And so I do encourage you all to download the app. It's very cool and, and we did have fun doing it. And it was interesting to see um, the, the business owners that were um, like into it, you know, like show me what that is and how do, you know, so it, it's, it's cool to use. I, I do encourage you all to at least take a look at that app. Yeah, and I think it's important to note, too, that it's not we're not trying to shame the businesses. Uh, it's not, you know, we'll go in there and, and it's really just a lot of people aren't aware of it. So it's really just bringing it to their attention. And it could be a simple fix. You know, I know there's a company here that I work closely with called Stopgap. And this young gentleman just builds really basic wood ramps for certain doorways that don't but he's done over uh, 200,000 across Canada now, all of a sudden through his not-for-profit. Absolutely amazing because all of a sudden businesses are like, oh, I didn't even notice, but yeah, I got a really difficult little ledge there that is tough to navigate for people. And, you know, he'll go in and build them a ramp and it's just a really good thing. And I think that that's where, again, you, you. Oh, we lost you there, um, Ari. I was just going to say because of disability Twitter a couple of years ago had a tweet that came out that said disabled parking should only be valid during business hours nine to five Monday through Friday. I cannot see any reason why people with genuine disabilities would be out beyond these times. And of course, a disability advocate tweeted right back. Um, we're disabled, Daniel, we're not werewolves. So I love this idea because what it does for me is as a person with a disability and many years in the disability community, there are a lot of people that say, well, there's paratransit. Well, paratransit doesn't get you to your kid's concert. Paratransit doesn't get you downtown to meet your friends on a weekend. There are, there are needs for community. And that's the part of this that spoke to me so deeply was, that's where you met your wife. That's where you meet your friend. That's where, you know, those types of opportunities for us are so key to feeling connected to community. So I'm, I'm with you all the way. I think it's so exciting. I just want to share that. Does anybody have any questions? You can stick them either in the chat or the question and answer section and I'll read them for folks. And while those are coming in, I just want to kind of reiterate, you know, what all three of you said, Peter, Tracy, and Diane. You know, um, please, 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 uh, if there's something that we can collaborate on, please reach out to Peter and I. Uh, we are all about, you know, creating that accessibility within our communities, and we want to have those discussions with the people that it impacts the most. Um, and we're able to do that by collaborating with you all. And then, Diane, you know, that was a super fun day <laughs> going out and tagging with you and Leslin. And so everybody that's in the meeting right now, that's something that you can do today. You can download the app. Uh, and go out into your own communities and be, you know, some of the first people that are creating that transparency within our communities. And it really is fun. Uh, so that's something that you can do today while we're responding to those emails and getting those meetings set up is getting out there and starting to uh, tag your community yourself. Hey, can you and Peter uh, drop your email addresses in the chat for folks? Absolutely. While we're waiting to see if anybody has any questions, I'm just going to talk a little bit about next month um, while they're putting their emails in there for you. Um, we're going to have Donna Case, who's an assistant professor in the clinical doctor occupational therapy program at the University of Michigan Flint. Um, she's retired now after working 30 years with low incident students in center based programs in Wayne County. Um, I can talk way more about her accomplishments, but she describes assistive technology as a big part of access. The key is to work through the IEP process to get it. She prides herself that parents that come into, came into her school district were met with the ability to partner with the team to get their child what they needed to be successful uh, beyond school and work, but in life. So she'll share insights into the IDA process 
and, and a process the team can go through to determine what a student's needs are before they start throwing assistive technology in. Um, a lot of current AT has application for children with disabilities. She says that's a big process part of how to get it. So on August 11th at 10, join us please for um, assistive technology and IEP. Let me see if anything's come in. I don't yet have anything else. Diane, do you have anything else? I do not. Okay. Well, I'm very excited. I am near you, um, Thomas, so I'll be connecting with you to see if oh, yeah. there are things that um, yeah. I live in Zealand and am really excited yeah. about this idea locally. Um, so yeah, I will be reaching out to you. Great. I grew up in Huxville, so I'm right down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much. This was great. We appreciate your time this morning. Well, thank, thank you. Thank everybody. you, everyone, for having us. Really appreciate it. And thank Take you care. all for joining us. We'll see you next month. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.